Some years ago, a senior ESCOM executive told me that at the heart of ESCOM's business model was big coal, big nuclear, and big networks. I can't think of a more Neanderthal business model. We've learned again through ESCOM's new coal power stations, Madupi and Kusile, that what you get with these mega plants is not what you planned for. The cost of massive capital infrastructure, especially new bespoke designs, often end up being more than double the estimates uh, initially and are commissioned long after uh, they are first needed, compromising electricity supply. So this experience with coal power investments has to make us think more carefully and deeply around our planning processes. How do we procure and contract new power and within what kind of market structure? In the past, ESCOM was solely responsible for generation planning, and in practical terms, it still is. It produces integrated resource plans, IRPs, at the guide, under the guidance of the Minister of Energy, who has statutory responsibility to determine how much new power generation is required, from which sources, uh, when, who should produce it, uh, and who should buy it. These are actually extraordinary powers. They were introduced, if we think about it, during the period of supply shortages. Um, but is this a sensible way of dealing with electricity supply? First glance, it may seem so. Let's plan, let's determine what should be built, by when, uh, and by whom. However, the practice has been less than perfect. The current IRP is regarded as, as being out of date. For example, its demand forecasts no longer reflect reality. In addition, options such as gas were not adequately considered, and the cost assumptions in the model for nuclear and renewable energy are at variance with revealed global market prices. Despite these deficiencies, there have been repeated statements that the IRP is our current plan, and South Africa is committed to investing in a fleet of new nuclear power stations. I don't believe anyone here will disagree that it's questionable and frankly it's potentially disastrous for our economy to rely on an IRP with outdated data and that depends on massive capital intensive multi-year investments in the context of uncertainty around future demand and costs. We need a, mu a new more responsive planning and investment paradigm in the face of uncertainty. So a number of reforms are necessary and let me propose a few. First of these is the IRP. Okay, to be sure the IRP provides us with a useful base that we now need to build on. But th the future demands that we put in place a much more dynamic planning system. Plans can only be relevant if they are implemented within given timelines, but also crucially if they are updated continually to reflect changing circumstances that have an impact on input assumptions. It is for this reason um, that the relevance of our current RIP is now questionable. And thankfully, and perhaps in recognition of this, uh, the DOE has asked ESTOM to update the RIP or at least to run some new test cases so that we can look at the impact of incorporating the these new assumptions. Hopefully these new new runs will be made available to the public uh, 